We're so freaking back. Hey everyone, Barbuskis here, and welcome back to another Let's Watch of Death Battle. Oh my god, it feels so good to say that again, finally. Um, cause yeah, it's been a minute, hasn't it? Um, uh, we, uh, kind of just had a whole company shut down that owned this show, so... Well, when that happens, uh, I guess the solution is to go independent. Um, well, if you can, anyway. Um, <laughs> um... So that being said, uh, we're back. We are so back, as they say. Um, it's been almost a year, which is crazy to me. Um, uh, and uh, we have gone completely independent. And the episode we are coming back with is Omni-Man from Invincible versus Bardock from Dragon Ball. Um, now, as I should say with all my reaction videos, please, please click the link in the description below and go watch the actual episode yourself. Uh, go support the official release before watching some random guy need to react to it. Uh, since they're independent, um, while I think they're in a, a good position right now, they probably could use a lot of the views, as much as many views as they can. Okay? Got it? Cool. Please don't watch, if, if you're one of those people who watches um, reaction videos before watching the actual thing. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so Omni-Man versus Bardock. Um, this is a matchup that uh, has kind of been a decently long time coming. Uh, it's just kind of bizarre to have Omni-Man back so soon because uh, you may know that uh, if you were watching this and you don't know, I'd be very surprised. But uh, Omni-Man has been in Death Battle already. He actually was in Death Battle freaking two years ago. Um... Uh, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is the so this is the first time that I've reacted to every episode that a returning combatant has been in. So, because uh, Omni Man's last episode against Homelander was uh, after I came back to do reaction videos. So, funny how that works. Um, it, so it's it's weird. It's weird to see him back after all uh, so soon, but. Uh, you're not gonna see me complaining. I, I like Omni-Man a lot. I like Invincible a lot. Um, I've actually taken the time to read the comics since uh, Omni-Man's last episode, and they are very, very good. Um, I like them a lot. Um, um, I have caught up on the show. Um, the show is very good too. Um, so, safe to say, I think I would. I think it's safe to say that I am a fan of this series. Um, uh, as opposed to Bardock, um, uh, I like to think I'm like a casual fan of Dragon Ball. Um, uh, I'm not like a super massive fan or anything, but uh, I still quite like it. Um, Bardock was never a character that really stood out to me. Not not to say he was bad, because he's not. Um, uh, he was just never a character that really like stuck out in my mind. Um, it doesn't help that um, he's a very early Dragon Ball character. Like a lot of his stuff is, we mostly see in backstory, because um, you know he's he's Goku's father. He died at uh, he died in the destruction of Planet Vegeta, um, and uh, yeah. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of funny to me that. Uh, Bardock is such like is such a fan favorite character, and again, I don't have anything against the guy. Um, uh, but it's just he has so little uh, media that I uh, am kind of surprised that um, at least so many little like appearances in like the show or manga that I um, it's just surprising to me as all. Well. Um, but again, not complaining. Uh, who am I to argue, really? Um, uh, but for me, the only thing I've seen Bardock in is Dragon Ball Super Broly, where he, uh, uh, sends Goku off to Earth, uh, and then dies. <laughs> um, uh, so, not exactly, I mean, he was, he was alright from, uh, from what I remember. It's been a minute since I've seen Super Broly, I'm not gonna lie. Um, uh, I didn't have anything against him. I still don't. 
it's just kind of funny to me that uh, he's such a popular character and uh, the thing he's most known for is being Goku's dead father. <laughs> like, okay. Um, uh, maybe I'm misreading the situation entirely. But, uh, yeah. Um, but, okay. Well, um, you see the things up here. I might actually do something different with that. But uh, if not, then this... what the, If if I don't do anything different th differently than the last time, then what I am talking about right now will make absolutely no sense. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll do it for the next episode. I don't know. I have ideas. Um, right now, we're just... I'm kind of just focusing on getting back into the swing of things because again it's been a year um well almost a year but you know what i mean anyways who do i want to win who do i think is going to win um well obviously well, if it wasn't kind of obvious as is i kind of want omni man to win um just in general i like him more i'm more um uh, engaged with invincible than i am dragon ball um i've always, i've heard of dragon ball first because uh, dragon ball came first and um I didn't really hear much of, of the show. I didn't hear much of this the, of Invincible until the show came out. Um, um, I had no idea they were based on comics from freaking 2003. Uh, go figure, right? Um, but just in general, I like Omni-Man more. Um, I just like Invincible more than Dragon Ball. So um, no real surprise that I'm rooting for Omni-Man in this one. Uh, who I think is going to win... Um, well, I could see arguments going either way, but it kind of sounds to me like Bardock's going to take this one. Um, uh, Omni-Man, in general, seems he's he's more experienced. That should be obvious enough. Um, he's more He's got better skill. Again, should be kind of obvious. Um, um, I believe he's smarter. At least I feel like he should be. Um... Um, now that's not to say Bardock is no slouch in any of those regards either. Uh, it's just that Omni-Man, well, it's just when you compare the two, Omni-Man is better. Um, but then you look into how strong Bardock is and what he scales to, uh, how fast he is. And, uh, yeah, that's where Omni-Man's arguments kind of start to fall apart. Uh, unless I'm missing something, which I guess is possible. Um, but I've read the entirety of the, at least the main comic run and watched the show fairly recently. So... I'm not going to rule out the possibility that I'm missing something, but I like to think that I have a pretty good handle on how strong and fast Omni-Man is. Um, um, but I guess we'll see what happens. Um, and on that regard, yeah, let's just stop, let's stop uh, stalling and just get right into it because I've been really looking forward to this fight, uh, mostly because, hey, we're so back. You know, it's kind of become the popular phrase nowadays. Let's do this. This battle is sponsored by Manscaped. I'm glad they're bringing that back. <laughs> Omni-Man versus Ooh. Bardock, the ostracized Filtramite and the Doomed Saiyan. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, they're and They're going skills. in on the fight, Bardock huh? Who would win a death battle. All right. That looks good. Earth's once greatest hero. Alongside the guardians of the globe, he protected the world from all manner of threats. And then, in a single day, it all went horribly wrong. Why, mm -hmm. Omni-Man? How, Omni-Man? Who, Omni-Man? Who, indeed. Champion of Earth, best-selling author, J.K. Simmons, yet it hmm. was all a charade with his murderous rampage only brought to a halt thanks to his own son. It all starts with his home planet, Viltrum. It's kind of funny how totally Omni-Man is like, brutal, mortal, uh, K, he plays himself off as a hero, and he does it really well, but, uh, but then you real, then you look into him, and it's like, he's actually kind of a scary being. Nolan Grayson. Expected to prepare the planet for imperial assimilation. Which should have been easy, since he's got your classic strongman superpowers, and he's basically invulnerable. Easily knocking around asteroids. Invincible, you may say. Texas. He can fly at unbelievable speeds, soaring from Earth to the planet Thraxa in under one week. Thraxa is, quote, a couple galaxies away, give or take. So mm -hmm. a minimum of two galaxies. Beyond the Milky Way's neighbor Andromeda is the lesser known. The editing here is off the charts. Which is DJ really uh, light years away. 
Reaching it in under one week means DJ outdid himself on this one. Over 142 million times faster than light. Oh, and Viltrumites can't breathe in space, so True. he held his breath the whole way. And it's not like he was in a rush. He was on a soul-searching trip, contemplating the significance of smashing his own son's face in. Think. Nolan, think. Yeah, this is why I'm never having kids. You're missing out. But according to another Viltrumite, Thetis, a bunch of AKA other Optimus Prime. were in a hurry. This guy. Viltrum across the Virgo supercluster in less than 24 hours. That's over 20 billion times faster than light. They don't really need to rush <laughs> anyway. The older a Viltrumite gets, the slower they age. According to the Invincible True. Handbook, Nolan is over 2,000 years old. And regardless of age, Viltrumites don't suffer muscle fatigue like humans do, so they rarely ever tire out. Seriously? He's got parenting easy mode on, and he couldn't even handle that. I would have killed for that yeah, when my I mean, daughter was born. Well, you would have to be a Viltrumite first. A Viltrumite's body contains smart atoms, which they subconsciously manipulate. This cellular mm -hmm. structure can effectively recall certain states of being regardless of their present environment, reacting to changes at an atomic level to perform the impossible. Yeah, like surviving your intestines. It's getting ripped out or yeah. even more scary ripping out your whole beard all at once characters in this series get messed <laughs> up only a viltrumite could pull off something that disturbing nolan is incredibly tough but if he faces superior forces his smart atoms can adjust to make him even stronger by comparison this is why viltrumites are considered in Invincible. Most yes. weapons in the universe can't even scratch a Viltrumite like him. Even a ship's cannon like this one can't take down a Viltrumite, and it obliterated a massive solar disk nearly oh, the this size feet. of a star. Speaking of planets, he's strong enough to shatter one by flying straight through it. A planet so big it has a whole ring around it. The Roche limit factor dictates the size a celestial body must be in order to disperse orbiting material as a ring. In short, an Earth-sized planet can't support such a ring, meaning this one must be much larger. And don't okay. get me started on how the ring is actually made up of dead bodies, because, uh, spoilers? Just go read the comic. If Rose yeah. isn't doing it for you, this planet also supports five moons in its orbit, and even the smallest is a perfect sphere, meaning its own gravity shaped it. At minimum, a moon like that must have a diameter of 600 kilometers, or 370 miles. Interesting. Comparing this to the planet's diameter, we can tell this world is nearly 14 <laughs> times larger than Earth. Or it was before... You know, they destroyed it. Now, yeah. Omni Man does have his weaknesses. Monsters like Rognars can pierce Viltrumite flesh, and he's extremely sensitive to a specific high pitch frequency, which can destabilize mm -hmm. his body's equilibrium. But his real weakness turned out to be, you guessed it, fatherhood. Thanks to his son, Mark, yeah. Nolan began to re-examine his perspective and his place in the universe. He settled down in a new place, got himself a new job, and even had a new kid with his new wife, who's a bug. The bug lady, uh, uh, he banged a bug. Why, Omni Man? How, Omni Man? <laughs> hey, I, everyone I don't, I don't deals question with it. Parenting stress in their own way. When Nolan was lecturing to Mark about how insignificant people are, Mark wasn't the only one he was trying to convince. If you can't yeah. trip. Nolan Grayson's real mission isn't planetary conquest or saving the innocent. It's to discover if a violent man who can break the world can also be a good father. Godspeed, Omni Man. Oh, okay. In the far reaches of the cosmos, laid a world with a people like no other. Born and raised I guess they to do weren't just one really. Thing. Uh, I guess they weren't going what? super into spoilers, Saiyans, but okay. A proud warrior people from the planet Vegeta, ruled by. The Let's see what Bardock's King got. Vegeta. Well, narcissist punch. Exactly. Their pride blinded them to the truth of their impending doom. But perhaps one Saiyan represented the best of them, even during their waning glory days. Bardock! He's cool, he's crude, he's got a bad attitude, and if he goes apeshit, you're totally screwed. Hmm. And guess what? It's father of Goku. Oh, wow, I never would have guessed. <laughs> right? No way. What a curveball. Is he really? So what does that make Turles? Who? Ahem. Exactly. Bardock was a cold-blooded killer ruthlessly conquering planets in service to the Saiyan's true overseer, Lord Frieza. They didn't just Carlos could just stay over there in non-canon land. <laughs> leaving Frieza uninhabited rocks to sell away. Bardock was an asshole. Well, it, until he wasn't. Bardock's well, most Saiyans are, so. Over the years, at least were. With multiple iterations to draw from. Including one where he's a brilliant scientist. Never mind. <laughs> most Saiyans still are but assholes. One is considered officially canon. Bardock's demeanor began to shift when he met and eventually married fellow warrior Gine, 
and had two sons, Raditz and Kakarot. No, Bardock didn't go totally soft. He was still a ruthless warrior. You know that iconic red headband of his? It's stained with the blood of his fallen friends. True. Hardcore. Bardock could fly, move faster than light, and was naturally adept in using his key as an explosive weapon. AKA shooting lasers from his hands. True to his brutal screw you nature. Ah, they're Super are Saiyan, okay. Overwhelming power. His final spirit cannon is like a key powered bazooka. His rebellion hammer punch ignites enemies felt, out of contact. Felt Pretty confident that they were including that, but wasn't 100% sure. Ram. The guy has no chill. He will run you over, break your spine, light you on fire, and then move on to the next guy. Oh, mm -hmm. and a day's work for a Saiyan. Marriage didn't change that. While Bardock cared for Gine, in fact, being one of few Saiyans of his time to actually have a romantic partner, he was still no family man. Like most Saiyans, he saw his sons as nothing more than future soldiers. Bardock mm. was a low class warrior, so it was unlikely his kids would grow up to be anything more than battlefield fodder but they would still well, possess he was right the on one of them <laughs> A transformation that was the key to their planetary devastation. Big Boogie! Under the light of a full moon, a Saiyan with a tail manifests the Uzaru. This great ape form increases Bardock's power tenfold, turning him into an unstoppable kaiju. Quick, yep. someone call Yajirobe! While some Saiyans can maintain control over this berserker form, low-class warriors like Bardock don't receive the same level of training as those of higher birth. Prince Vegeta's control is so precise oh, really? that his speak while changed, but Bardock Bardock cannot. Hell, it's questionable if he even remembers everything that happens when he goes full tilt gorilla. The Saiyan strategy is pretty much just monkey see, monkey smash. Despite being low Got it. class, Bardock's power level nearly matched that of King Vegeta, who could destroy multiple planets at once. Mm -hmm. At about this time, King Vegeta's power level was around 10,000. Yeah, we know power levels are kind of janky. Nobody can agree on what the number really means. Outside of his fight with gas, Bardock doesn't really show any high end feats in canon. But we can use power levels to compare him to other characters with similar levels to better understand his potential. Like when his son fought Prince Vegeta. What's the scouter say about his power level? It's over 8,000. Yeah, the dub changed it to fit Vegeta's lip flaps, but we only cover the cold hard truth, damn it. According <laughs> to this movie pamphlet, Goku's power level between his fight with Vegeta <laughs> and his dynamic was 10,000. This lines up with that previous reading and puts him on par with Bardock. Goku's training during the trip eventually raised him to 90,000 upon arrival, but this gives us a clear window. Yeah, early in the trip, he had to dodge uh -huh. a bunch of incoming asteroids and blast his ship away from a star, which is impressive considering the speed involved. The planet Namek is outside Earth's quadrant of the universe, and it took his ship six days to make the journey. Traveling a quarter of the universe's diameter would put the ship over 9.5 trillion times the speed mm. of light. And Goku would have had to keep up with that kind of speed to do all that other stuff. Makes sense given far weaker characters could reach the moon in a fraction of a second. Should be trivial enough for Bardock. All this speed and power meant when Bardock and his team assaulted the planet Serial, they went, Cheerio! Bardock ravaged the planet, annihilating its people, until he found two survivors, a mother and her child. Some may call it weakness, others a moment of clarity, but Bardock was suddenly reminded of his wife and recently born son. He chose to spare the two, and even pushed himself far past his limits to protect them from his own Frieza Force allies, who taunted that Frieza had dire plans for the Saiyan's future. This moment changed Bardock, making him more appreciative of his family and cautious of Frieza. When all the Saiyans were called back to planet Vegeta for mysterious reasons, he had a hunch something was up. So before his final stand, smashing through hundreds of soldiers before coming face to face with the tyrant, he sent his youngest kid away for protection. A choice that allowed his son to thrive and hey that's what good parents do a choice mm. that would have a greater significance than bardock could ever imagine and then yeah. you know, dickhead blew them all up and he died or or did he? yeah bardock got killed so freaking hard he got blasted back in time actually he was pulled away by these two who miscalculated and misplaced him incorrectly in the time stream blah 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 non-canon whatever he survived and when he realized what happened, he got so unbelievably pissed off, he went Super Saiyan. What? All right, this is very much an alternate universe what if scenario, and it is jarring. But think about it. The Super Saiyan form is not achieved through training alone. It requires dedication, introspection, victory, failure, love, and loss. Mm. Frieza destroyed the Saiyans because he feared the possibility of the Super Saiyan, a Saiyan with power that could rival his own. 
But perhaps Bardock's transformation was more than simply a what if. He had begun to take the very steps his son later would to achieve the form. Perhaps if Frieza had hesitated, even for a moment, his fear would have manifested before him right then and there. Damn, poor one out for Bardock, who figured out how to be the truest Saiyan right at the end of it all. I know Kakarot would be proud. Yeah, probably. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle! Um, pause. Okay, we need to talk about this real quick. Real quick. Um, there's still over seven minutes left of this video. Huh. All right, anyways. Um, so, yeah, I still think Bardock's going to win this. Um, <laughs> um, unless, uh, so they, it was interesting to me that they didn't calc um, either the Sun Disk feat or the Viltrum feat. Um, they, they, they got, they, they put in sizes, but, um, uh, that was it. Um, but that's, that's still important to know because, um, I, I don't, re I think, uh, the guys over at the G1 prediction blog tried to calc how big Planet Viltrum is, and I don't remember what that ultimately came out to, um. But that was an interesting way to uh, decipher it, so I'm okay. Um, this might be a case where um, uh, Omni Man might um, might be stronger than Bardock in base form, potentially, because um, they also didn't put in any calcs for King Vegeta's feet either. Um, um, they had one for Frieza's up in a, up in a, uh, a black box. So, um, um, yeah. Uh, so, but anyways, uh, as far as speed goes, Bardock is still faster. Um, uh, that Goku feat got a little higher than I, uh, remember it getting, so that doesn't help matters. Um... Um, so, yeah, um, so as I was saying, potentially Omni-Man could probably be stronger than Bardock in base form, but then Bardock goes like Great Ape or Super Saiyan, and then he gets the advantage back, because Super Saiyan's like a 50 times, uh, multiplier, right? Um, so, it's not looking good for good old Nolan Grayson, um, but, uh, yeah, so I still think Bardock's going to win this. I just wanted to cover that real quick. Um, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, because I still want Omni-Man to win. But, uh... Anyway, I'm going to stop stalling. Let's get to it. I'm nervous. This is, like, the first death battle in almost a year, so... This is gonna be fun. Great. Another gross bug planet. Ooh, hello. This planet isn't anyone's to conquer. Don't underestimate me! Yeah, they didn't go full in <laughs> they didn't go full MK1 with it, but okay. See what you got, Nolan. <laughs> Gonna play catch with a space pod? Never mind. Whatever you are, you're an embarrassment. Oh boy. Great ape time. 
Am I supposed to be impressed? Okay, well, I mean, maybe not impressed, but you are kind of getting tossed around. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, I had a feeling that was gonna happen. Where did your bandana go? Shit. Oh. All right, Super Saiyan. See how you stack up, Nolan. Oh, wait, what? You said Saiyan. Remember it. Did Omni Man win? Wait a minute. Hey, these Gokus have got to stop picking fights with guys in capes. Pitting Saiyan against Viltrumite is fascinating. Among the many similarities, five specific categories stand out. Starting with speed. Bardock is much faster given his power level matched Goku dodging asteroids at 9.5 trillion times light yeah. speed. Yeah. Much higher than the Viltrumite's fastest speed. Add on the 50 times multiplier from... <laughs> uh, yeah, that's... It's a huge difference. Right, Bardock clearly has the speed advantage, but strength and durability are another story. Though it doesn't seem like it at first, Bardock scales to King Veggie, who wrecked three right. planets at once, and Omni-Man only smashed one. But given how big that one planet was, the numbers are actually pretty similar. Until we factor in the Super Saiyan boost, right? Well, there's a catch. A major plot point in Invincible involves the coalition of planets admitting that their weapons cannot hurt Viltrumites. So, when their ship's cannon obliterated this gigantic solar disk, it highlighted just how tough the Viltrumites really are. This disk completely blocked the sunlight and heat between a planet and its star. And this is no ordinary planet. Its size and density are so high that its inhabitants are as strong as Viltrumites just due to living in its natural gravity. To fully block the light to such a planet and remain in consistent orbit, the disk would need to be positioned at its L1 point, the spot that creates an uninterrupted view between sun and satellite. And the disk has the board of wisdom. This means the scaling of the disk puts it at three septillion tons. That's 24 zeros. Ooh. Which makes Omni-Man over 11,000 times stronger than base Bardock. Not even the great ape or super saiyan forms could make up that difference. Wow, so really? goes to Nolan. Still, numbers aren't everything. As far as versatility in combat goes, neither had one distinct advantage that could win outright. Omni-Man survives in space for much longer, but Bardock barely squeaks out the edge here thanks to his ranged versatility with key attacks and, of course, Super Saiyan. Okay, mm -hmm. let's address the Super Saiyan Bardock thing. It's perfectly fair to question whether or not the form should be in this comparison at all. However, even with the form included, Nolan still takes this, especially when it comes to our last two categories, experience and stamina. Yep. Yeah. Man's been around a lot longer than Bardock, over 2000 years, and even with Super Saiyan, Bardock's no master of the form. And without that mastery, the form drains the user's energies at an increased uh, rate, which brings us to what may be Omni-Man's most surprising advantage. Those weird smart atoms. Saiyans like Bardock can fight for days on end, but only for so long. 
Bardock possesses a limited pool of ki, which only depletes faster when using super forms like the Great Ape. In contrast, Omni-Man's biology prevents him from tiring in most cases, letting him travel across whole galaxies for weeks non-stop, and his smart atoms adjust to counter whatever physical strain he's subjected to. Bardock's crazy speed and power made him a real challenge. But Nolan's strength, experience, and sheer endurance presented an unstoppable Ooh, and Ooh, I'm gonna have to go back to all this, because... That would inevitably land the killing blow. I should have my name in this. Shove, Omni-Man raised the bar, duck. The winner is Omni-Man. Next time on Ooh. Death Battle. What? Subscribe and join as a member to see more Death Battle. Wow. Joker versus Jorno. Okay, so um fascinating. <laughs> okay, let's start let's talk about Joker versus Jorno first. Um uh oh boy. <laughs> Debate for that one's gonna be fun. Um, I uh, I won't lie, I'm a little concerned. <laughs> um, I mean, hmm. Okay. Um, sorry. Excuse me. Um, I mean, I'm like decently excited for that one, but I'm I'm scared of the uh, debate process. Um. Because that one seems like a uh, hell of a time to uh, that seems like a hell of a fight to uh, to debate. Um, so I'm uh, maybe a little concerned about that, but uh, it sounds like it could be a really cool episode. Um, uh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really have a whole lot to say on, the, on that one. Uh, I'm not like a super massive Persona fan. I do like JoJo's. Um, I didn't really watch much of Part Five, although now I guess I, I have to change that. So, <laughs> um, but uh, we'll see what happens, I suppose. Um, initial bets right now. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Every time I see someone talk about this fight, the long and short of it is that uh, um, Joker has like a pretty solid uh, physical advantage. Like he like he would definitely win if it wasn't for Gold Experience Requiem's kind of bullshit powers. Um, so I don't know, but I guess we'll see what happens. Um, but as for this episode, um, okay, well, first of all, kind of a surprise. I'm kind of surprised that Omni-Man won. Um, um, I'll have to see what everybody else uh, uh, has to uh, has to say on the matter, because I remember uh, feats like the Viltrum uh, busting thing, the Sun Disk. Um, I remember that being brought up a lot during, um, during conversation, but uh, there were a lot of unknowns in both of them um so i guess i'll have to see how the reaction is to the knowns now <laughs> like they're, they're not unknowns anymore at least as far as death battle is concerned um but uh i mean i'm happy you know I, the character i like more one so I'm, I'm cool with that um it was a dope fight too that was that fight was awesome um um everybody involved um in that uh in the making of this episode deserves um, deserves high praise. That was that was really good. I like that one a lot. Um, from like we had uh, the researchers, um, researchers, writer um, Ben, uh, voice actors. That's Tom Shock as Omni Man and uh, Cameron Nikot as Bardock. Both of them absolutely crushed it. I gotta say that. Um. um Actually, hold on. I just remembered. I need to go back and check the um Wait, what what the hell is that? Did they changed the thumbnail? Really? Okay. Um Hold on. I need to check to see I need to find my name in the in the credits here. Oh wow, some people a lot of people put in the producer credit. Okay. 
Let's see. Special thanks. I should have my name somewhere in here. Yeah, there I am. All right. Uh, I'll have to look through. Uh, I'll have to look through this. Uh, this whole special thanks thing to really see. Um, who all is in here? Cause that that's a lot of people. Oh my god. Um, let's see. Is uh my buddy your only mate in here? I feel like he. If I remember correctly, he. Um. He was in the same tier as me. Maybe I'm wrong. Chances are I am. Um. Yep, found him. All right, cool. <laughs> all right, definitely gonna have to look through all of this. All right. Um. But anyways, yeah. And then the animation, Devil Artemis. Uh. Okay. Let me just say this. If anybody. Who, who uh, helped make this episode is watching this reaction video. Um, just know that I think you deserve the utmost praise because this was fantastic. I loved this so much. Um, um, and to everybody who donated on the Kickstarter and all that jazz, um, you know, the, the people that helped save Death Battle, um, you guys are awesome. Um, um, everybody in this, like in the producer credit and the special thanks credit, um, deserves all of the praise in the world. They are, they are fantastic. Um, um, so yeah, I think that's just going to, I think that's about, uh, to wrap it up. So, um, with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and get going. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will talk to you all in the next video. Bye, everybody.